Currently, the NHS, as we all know, is facing multiple pressures from multiple directions. We've got the fact that we're an ageing population, that many people present with comorbidities, so they have multiple things wrong with them that needs seeing to. Where we go from there is that we also have the potential with science to make huge advances forward. All these things, with the power of science and the power of data, we can do. Personalised medicine actually gives us a chance to deliver the medicine to the individual and that can save money and save lives. The government has really got behind the life sciences agenda and within that personalised medicine, 4.6 billion has been protected and we've seen another 330 million from private investment. The government has made it a key priority for the production and diffusion of biosciences throughout the NHS as it drives this innovation forward. The Minister for Life Sciences, the Honourable George Freeman, he understands the whole agenda here brilliantly. Um, he is personally overseeing the Accelerated Access Review and I am really hoping that with his leadership we will start to see what we really need in this area. The Secretary of State Jeremy Hunt, he has said that what he wants to see is by the use of innovation and technology to put the power where we really need it to be in the hands of the patient and it's that shift that's really important and is the real treasure here. Personalised medicine goes right across the piece in technologies, in medicines, so you have better diagnostics, better prognosis and a better um, approach to preventative medicine, all of which are hugely important. People want more control. They, so if you could take your blood pressure, for example, at home and you send the results via your phone to the surgery and if nothing's wrong, you don't have to waste time going in. The same for a diabetic and many other things. We have the power to release the patient so they are no longer a patient beholden to the doctor, they are a patient who can live their life. In particular, I think what I'm really excited to start to look at is things around big data. It's hugely important that we capture patient data so we can understand what treatments are effective and what aren't. The 100,000 Genome Project, genomics has moved so far forward, as has informatics, but with the ability to understand our own human genome, which has dropped in price phenomenally and is now a fraction of what the cost was when it originally started, and actually being able to articulate simply for people what personalised medicine is. I think sometimes science is seen as, ooh, not to do with us. So this APPG for me gives us the potential to take all those expertise, to work with the industry, to inform government, inform patients, inform the broader perspective of parliamentarians so they understand what healthcare going forward into the 20s and 30s in this country is going to look like. The PHG Foundation is supporting us in the work that we're doing, so you can approach them. We have a website on www.personalisedmedicineappg.org or we have partner organisations who would be happy to talk to you about the work that we're doing and how you could actually feed in to actually making this whole agenda much, much more informative. I'm really, really keen that this APPG should spread its wings as widely as it can. I would like to see engagement from across the piece, from clinicians, from scientists, from government, from the healthcare industry, from pharmaceuticals, specifically, even from innovation, from the life sciences industry, biotechs and so on, because at the end of the day we all have the same interest and that is the patient at the centre of what we're doing. <laughs>